Guilty by Association, a safe haven orphanage mystery. An audio series by Patricia Asidic Bega. Dedicated to everyone that has worked in retail and has experienced the good, the bad and the ugly of the sector. Episode 1 Gloria! The woman straightened up from stocking up a lower shelf in her small convenient shop to see Agatha Umede walking purposely towards her almost not giving her enough time to arrange her countenance into one that could be perceived to be pleasantly surprised by the visit. "'Good morning, Agatha. How are you doing?' Gloria asked, as the plump woman invited herself to sit on the chair behind the cash register, as opposed to the high stool on the other side of the desk. Something anyone with a minimum sense of decorum would have done." Gloria hoped that it would be a short visit, as the unwelcome guest, when she had time to waste, could comfortably sit for hours in her shop, not caring about the plans Gloria could have. I have excellent news for you, Agatha beamed. You know that the shopping mall that opened up near your house is still leasing out shops, right? Yes, I've seen the billboards, and have also gone in a few times. There are shops that are open for business already. Gloria replied as she closed the open accounts book that Agatha was unashamedly peering into. Really, you've been there? Agatha didn't disguise her surprise. I hope not to buy stuff. The cost of items are normally upped. Better you go to the local market where you can haggle. I know that you're always on a budget. Her visitor smiled as she adjusted her headscarf, matching the traditional outfit she was wearing and Gloria chose not to reply to the woman's not-so-subtle reminder that she could not afford shopping at the mall. Apparently, it was reserved for a certain kind of people. Anyway, I heard from Joker, who heard from Inni, who heard from Laura, that Tega Aliu got a space about three months ago and opened up a luxury cosmetic shop and is looking for staff. So, I asked Joker to tell Innie to tell Laura to in turn tell Tega about your girl. I can't remember her name, the one who just finished secondary school. Agatha looked at her inquiringly. Elizabeth, that's very kind of you, Agatha. Do you know what shift she is hiring for? They close quite late in the evenings, and I don't want her out at those hours of the night, Gloria replied. Gloria, it is just a fifteen minutes walk from your house. The girl is nearly 18 and has been sitting at home for almost three months now, waiting for someone to sponsor her to learn a trade, Agatha said. Look, let's call a spade a spade. Beggars can't be choosers. You need to recognise opportunities and jump at them when they present themselves. I'm waiting to hear back from Joker. I asked for her to be included in the interview process. Let me call and ask if she got an answer. The woman rummaged for her mobile in her bag, leaving Gloria no opportunity to reply to the comment, implying that she did not have a choice. Elizabeth was not idle. She was home doing the many chores that needed seeing to, and those left little time for anything else. But something told her that her explanations would not be appreciated. Agatha came looking for a thank you and would not leave without that acknowledgement. Agatha spent a good ten minutes talking about everything and everyone else before getting to the reason for her call. Gloria did not get the gist of it as a customer approached the register with a tin of milk and two loaves of bread in her hands. Smiling at her, Gloria asked how her son was. The boy had been off from school battling malaria. Agatha continued the call until the woman left. A hen! Joe Kerr said she was just about to call me, but I beat her to it. Elizabeth is expected on Wednesday at 10am at the mall for an interview with the owner herself. She said Laura pleaded for Elizabeth to be received. Apparently, there's only one spot left, and a good number of the candidates want it. Everyone wants to work there. Please, ask her to dress smartly. Tega will not give her a chance if she doesn't look presentable, Agatha advised. Thank you for all you have done. Let me discuss it with Elizabeth, Chiddy and Uche. I'll call you this evening, 
Gloria replied, not wanting to commit to anything. Gloria and her famous council of war. See, you have nothing to discuss. People get tired of giving. This is the best option for your girl. Let her work and see for herself that nothing in life is free. She can even save and pay for her own training. Gloria, a word to the wise. You won't be around forever. All those children you collected, what will become of them? Agatha raised a knowing eyebrow as she opened a pack of plantain chips that she had taken from one of the shelves. Gloria bit her lip, deciding not to reply. Everyone was quick to give advice on what she was to do to better her situation. She knew for a fact that Agatha would never allow her daughter Pauline to work in a shop, but it was fine for Elizabeth to do so, and one even had to be grateful for the opportunity. Oh, it was an honest job, but she knew how some employers took advantage of adverse situations to exploit people, and she wanted to protect her children from that. At least, for as long as she could. People were always quick to offer advice, along with the charity work they did, not having an inkling about how fragile her family was, how many times a week Gloria had to reassure one member or the other that he or she was very wanted, loved and needed, and that she was going nowhere. People were very insensitive. What never ceased to shock her was that even some teachers were not careful with the words used to correct an already traumatised child. Sometimes adults were the worst. Still, there was some truth in what the annoying woman had said. The kids needed to be prepared for when she would no longer be with them. All the burden could not fall on Uche and Chidi. Agatha got up, and from her manner it seemed that she was ready to leave. Gloria could only hope that that was the case. Thank you for the information and help. Are you going to pay for that? Gloria pointed at the empty packet and the sweets the woman had kept in her bag, in a very non-matter-of-fact way. After all I just did for you? Agatha asked in shock. Like you well know, Gloria replied. I have fifteen mouths to feed. I can't afford to give all the people that help me free stuff from my shop. And I know you would never take advantage of a widow, or much less of orphans. She held out her hand, and Agatha, after shaking her head, rummaged through her bag slowly, hoping she would be stopped at some point before being forced to produce the money. morning. I have a ten o'clock appointment with Mrs. Aliu. Elizabeth greeted the woman behind the counter, who gave her a once-over. What's your name? the woman asked her, and Elizabeth provided the information. She will see you in a few moments in that office at the end. You can stand near the door for when she calls for you. Elizabeth thanked her, walked quickly towards the brown closed door at the far end of the shop, and stood near it. She had arrived early, as Sally, their neighbour, had advised she was to do. The young woman worked in the human resources department of a company and had practised the interview with her, and given Elizabeth some tips so she would know what to answer to almost anything that she could be asked. The young girl looked around her. It was important to know exactly what was sold there, in case that was part of the interview. Everything was arranged in sections. At the entrance of the shop was make-up, then shelves with perfumes, male and female differentiated per sections. Elizabeth had not been able to see what was in every aisle, but next to where she was standing were the shelves for the toiletries. There was a young woman in uniform near her, next to a stack of boxes, taking out a pack of toothpastes. Opening it, she placed the individual boxes on the corresponding shelf. Are you here for an interview? the dark-skinned girl asked, and Elizabeth nodded. Best of luck. There's only one space left. The boss seemed to really like one of the girls that came in this morning. Let me give you a tip. Anything she asks you, just say you can do it, even if you have no idea regarding what she's talking about or you feel it's not in your job description. 
When I went in to take her a cup of tea, I heard one of the candidates say that she would not clean as the post being offered was in sales, and she assumed there would be someone employed to do that. I shook my head. No way would she get the job after saying that. Why didn't you wear a wig? The girl eyed the row of plaits on Elizabeth's head. I don't own one, was the reply Elizabeth gave, her hand unconsciously running through her head. Hmm, that will not go in your favour. The boss wants a certain image here. Look around you. See how everyone is slim and well made up? At least your hair is neat, and your clothes are clean and ironed. I'm Eloise, by the way. The girl smiled, and Elizabeth smiled back, glad that she had been able to use her choir uniform for something else aside from singing at Mass on Sundays. She was about to reply when the door opened and a woman came out and peered at her from above the rim of her glasses. Elizabeth Olatu? Yes, ma, she replied nervously, and the woman stood aside, inviting her to go into the office. The small room had piles of boxes almost everywhere, and a desk and two chairs in the middle of it. Elizabeth stood waiting to be asked to be seated, as Sally had advised she was to do. The woman, who was sporting a hairpiece as the rest of her staff, and very heavily made up, waved her hand for her to be seated. I have to be frank with you. I agreed to see you because a friend insisted. I know you are from an orphanage, and whilst I must commend you for concluding your studies living in what I'm sure is a more complicated environment than most kids grow up in, I do not wish to do charity work in my business. You don't even have a CV or experience like the other candidates. The woman observed her gravely, and Elizabeth's heart sank. It felt like she had already decided to not employ her. But then, she was not one to give up without a fight. She had been able to convince her mother and brothers that she would be responsible, not get carried away by the ambience, and save towards beauty school. So, she had to try to do the same with the owner of the establishment. After all, she was already there and had nothing to lose. You were right, Ma. I can't compare in experience to the other people that you must have seen. I'm fresh out of school. But ultimately, what matters to you are the sales. And I can sell umbrellas in the desert if that is what is needed. I'm punctual, hardworking, responsible and a fast learner. I believe that if given the chance, I can be an asset to your business. Elizabeth replied hopefully. And that's what every candidate says. Then, when they start working, it's another story. I had to let a girl go last week after catching her taking things from my shop to stock up what was needed at home. Tell me, why should I hire you? I've seen ten people this morning, and after you there are a number of others, some like you, come with recommendations. Give me a good reason. The eyes of the woman bored into hers as Elizabeth's mind raced, trying to come up with something ingenious and original to say. Ma, let my work speak for itself. My dream is to go to beauty school, but I am a self-trained makeup artist. Allow me to do a trial on someone so you can make an informed decision. There was a moment of silence in which Elizabeth had ample time to wonder if the online video tutorials that friends from school had allowed her to see on their mobiles were enough to have termed herself as self-trained. Tega Aliu was made up. Elizabeth was not sure that the woman would be willing to let anyone play with her appearance, so she hoped there would be a volunteer. Very well, I have a lunch date with my husband. Let's see what you can do. You have everything you need over there, the woman replied. Elizabeth did not need to be asked twice. She went over to the open drawer that had been indicated to her as she prayed in silence to St. Jude. Yes, St. Jude was the right saint to ask for an intercession in this case. Fifteen minutes later, the woman, whom she hoped would be her future boss, studied herself in the mirror as Elizabeth held her breath. Hmm, not bad. Thank you, Ma. You can't even see the greenish hue any more, the girl nervously volunteered the unsolicited bit of information. Which greenish hue? The stern-looking eyes glared at her as Elizabeth silently chastised herself. Any luck? 
Elizabeth almost jumped out of her skin. She had been standing close to the huge sliding glass doors of the shopping mall, just far enough for them not to open. Turning around, she saw that it was one of the two security guards that she had seen on her arrival to the mall. How did you know what I came here for? She asked the young, lanky man. Most shops here are hiring. New ones are opening almost daily, and seeing how you were dressed, it was either for an interview or for choir practice, and this not being a church. The man grinned at her, his dimples showing as he masterfully kept the toothpick in the corner of his mouth well in place. She sighed, shaking her head in answer. Oh well, don't lose hope. I'm Jimmy, by the way. The man over there, sitting like the chair is part of his anatomy, is Obi, my colleague. My advice is that if they don't call you for this one, come around daily. A number of shops pin vacancies on the notice board. Thank you. Elizabeth smiled and turned away, noticing that Obi seemed to be fast asleep. She wondered how he was going to be of any help if the need arose. How did you think that saying such a thing would in any way help your cause? Helen, her sister, asked, shaking her head in disbelief at what the other girl had just revealed. They were all sitting down for dinner, and of course everyone had been waiting to hear a word-by-word account of how the interview had gone. I just came out. I was nervous. And you know how I get when there is silence and someone is staring at me. I feel the irresistible urge to say something. It was what had actually given me the idea to begin with. I noticed the colouring and thought, I could make a good job of hiding it. You know those green tones that appear after one has used a bad quality bleaching cream? She has a number of those on her face, Elizabeth explained. She was just being polite when she said she would call you. Even I know not to tell someone that their skin resembles a rainbow. Best pray for another job. Henry, alias small but mighty, advised, a look of wisdom on his face. I asked St. Jude to pray for me, Elizabeth replied. Ask for more saints, all the ones you know. This is no simple thing you are asking for. In short, Mama, it should be the main focus of our night prayers today. Nick and I have written a list of the things we need from your first salary, so there's a lot riding on you getting this job. I'm sure that you're well aware of the long-established tradition to spend it on the family. And we... Our family. The boy stood up and opened his arms to indicate just how big their family was, and everyone at the table laughed, especially because they were all sure that that list existed and that Elizabeth would be held to it. Elizabeth could not deny that she was worried. She really needed the job. Every Naira that came into the house was important. After Chidi and Yuche, Jane, Helen, Edmund, and herself were the next oldest. They were well aware of the meetings that went on at night between their mother and the two eldest boys, whenever things were extra tight, which was practically every week. Helen, Jane and Edmund had started learning a trade. They had gotten sponsors because Gloria Alotu and Father Charles had started looking for them a year before they finished school. However, things were proving difficult in getting one for her. Everyone had a lot of expenses. Promises had been made. But they had not been kept, and Elizabeth did not want to be forgotten. Jane was in charge of the washing up that week. The quiet girl was busy doing that, and Elizabeth helped clean the dining area. The younger children ate the same way they coloured, always outside the lines. Aside from what I said, I'm worried that she won't take me because I don't fit her profile, Elizabeth said as she soaked some cutlery into the soapy water. What do you mean? Jane inquired. For one, all the girls had wigs or extensions on. They were well made up. I, on the other hand, had only lip gloss on, so my hopes are not very high. I can't afford a hairpiece, and you know Mama has said that we can either sport afros or plait our hair. The choice is ours, as long as we understand that there is no budget for hair maintenance. I can't possibly compete with them. Elizabeth was the professional hair braider of the house, 
All the girls booked appointments with her on Friday and Saturday evenings to get their hairs styled for the week. True, that could be a reason not to take you. But you're very creative, and natural hairstyles are back in vogue. If she calls you again, up your game with what you have. And if it's not enough for her, then you probably don't need to work in a place that will constantly have you wishing you could spend money that you don't have, Jane said, her eyes on the task she was engrossed in. Elizabeth knew her sister was right. She had needed to hear those words. Jane, like Uche, was quiet and observant. She never rushed into decisions. The phrase, go and ask Jane, was often heard in the house. The next afternoon, a knock on the door revealed a smiling Sally. Elizabeth had been getting lunch ready. Soon, those that had gone to school would return and would be expecting to eat. No work today, she asked the woman, who had followed her into the kitchen with familiarity. Sally had gotten married the previous year and had moved into the neighbourhood with her husband, taking a liking to the inhabitants of the orphanage and often remembering them on her trips to the market. On my lunch break, actually. I forgot some documents at home, so I had to come back. On the way, I got a call from Tega Aliou. She said she wants to see you at 6pm this evening. Sally shouted the last bit excitedly, and Elizabeth dropped the wooden spoon, her mouth open at the very unexpected news. That is good, right? I mean, otherwise she wouldn't have even bothered calling. Oh, what shall I wear? Or do to my hair? Can I borrow your curling tongs? Elizabeth asked, her hand automatically touching her hair. Like on her last visit, she arrived on time. The store was quite busy. The woman at the counter was different from the one she had spoken to the other time she had been there. She was quite busy attending to the line of people waiting to pay and asked her to go right in and knock. On her way to the door at the far end, she counted two other girls in uniform, which consisted of a red blouse and a pair of black trousers. None of them were Eloise. Come in! Elizabeth stood nervously, waiting to be invited to take a seat, which the grave-looking woman did with a wave of her hand. Elizabeth felt scrutinised, and she tried to hold the gaze of the woman with confidence. After careful deliberation, I have decided to give you a month's trial. I'll review your performance at the end of the month and make a final decision. You have no experience, so this will be your salary. It's less than what the rest are earning, as they all came with a CV, and I am giving you the opportunity to have something in yours. The extended hand held a paper, which the girl took from her. Elizabeth looked at the paper the figure she would be earning had been written on. It was 10,000 naira, less than what she understood that similar positions paid. Her outspoken nature was pushing her to formulate some kind of protest, but she channeled the inner Jane in her and decided to be silent, waiting for the rest. If you work hard, we will revisit this issue later on. In that bag is your uniform. I see that you've done something with your hair. I'm not a fan of the natural look, but it does suit you and is neat. I expect you and your guardian at 9am tomorrow morning to sign the contract, and then you can start. Any questions? To stay up to date with Patricia Asedegbega's work, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.